Do you believe that you have found peace or have peace of mind? The search for peace of mind can be one that seems endless or impossible to many people that are in our world today. And I believe this to be the case for a couple of reasons. The first reason being that many people do not know where to even begin to find such peace. Mm -hmm. The second reason being that many people are searching for peace in the wrong places. And not only are they searching for peace in the wrong places, they are searching for peace of mind in the wrong manner. Mm -hmm. As you have heard me say in the past, when we think of peace or when we speak of peace of mind, Mm -hmm. it is common to think about peace. Think about gaining this peace in a worldly mindset. See peace of mind has been defined as a state of tranquility or quiet, such as freedom from civil disturbance or a state of security provided by community or provided by law. However, many of us have come to the realization that the worldly idea of peace is often interrupted. The worldly idea of peace is often disturbed. In other words, the world's idea of peace It is short lived Mm -hmm. peace of mind. I tell you today, according to worldly standards, it is temporary. The world's idea for peace. It is often interrupted. Mm -hmm. It is often disturbed our peace of mind. It is often interrupted. It is often disturbed by our heartaches, by our pains, Mm -hmm by our fears, by our worries, Mm -hmm. by our burdens, by our stress. You see, all of these things, they they seem to make it hard for us to feel safe and secure in our mind. In other words, they, they, they seem to make it hard for us to have peace of mind. Do you have peace of mind today? I will always point out that when we speak about having peace of mind, Mm -hmm. that we should understand that we are talking about peace in a spiritual manner. Mm -hmm. See, peace of mind, it is very real. But Mm -hmm. the question is whether or not you are going to the right place to find this peace of mind. In other words, are you searching for a peace of mind in the right manner? So on this Palm Sunday, I want to focus on peace of mind. Mm -hmm. I want to focus on where peace of mind comes from. And I want to focus on how we can go about receiving this peace of mind. Come on, come on. In my sermon a couple of Sundays ago, you will recall that I focused on a woman who was troubled by her many sins. This this woman whose sins were many, Mm -hmm. she sought out Christ. And when she found him, we are told in scripture that her eyes were filled with tears. Mm -hmm. She then humbly washed the feet of Jesus in the home of Simon, the Pharisee. And it was at that occasion where Jesus looked upon her. And I want you to understand that he did not look upon her physically. He looked upon her spiritually. And Jesus, he forgave her of her many sins. And he said to this woman, your faith has saved you. And then after he said and told her that her faith had saved her, Mm -hmm. Jesus said to her, go in peace. Now I bring this sinful woman up 
in my sermon this week because this woman, she initially did not have peace of mind, did she? You see, she did not have peace of mind until she came before the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, peace of mind, I want you to understand today, it can only come from one place. It can only come from one person. It can only come from your maker. It can only come from the Lord. You see, without the Lord, you and I, we cannot know, we cannot receive, we cannot have peace of mind. Now, someone might ask, how so, preacher? How can you say this, pastor? Mm -hmm. You see, the reason why it has been so hard for man to establish peace in our world today is because for millennia, yes, yes. man has gone about trying to establish peace in our world from a mindset mm -hmm. that is not of the Lord. You see, it is impossible for one that does not know God. All right, all right. It is impossible for one that does not have a mindset that is God focused or mm -hmm. God centered, if you will, mm -hmm. to find, to know, or to even be capable of sharing peace yeah. with those that are around them. I don't know if you hear me here today. Mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. well. Do you have peace of mind? Mm -hmm. All right. So in order for there to be peace in our world today, we must first, we must first have peace residing within us. For you to have peace with another, peace must first reside in you. Again, I don't know if you hear me here today. For peace to reside in us, mm -hmm. we must first examine ourselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> we must first examine our mind. Yeah. That is to say that we must examine our heart. Mm -hmm. We must examine our soul. Mm -hmm. We must do this, not physically. I'm not asking you to go and get an x-ray. I'm asking you to do this spiritually today. Ask yourself who or what is leading your heart spiritually. Ask yourself, is your mindset one that is centered, one that is focused on the Lord? Or is it a mindset? Is your heart being led by something or someone else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Answer the question. Now, to explain this thought, we will see in his letter to the Colossians today, in the first chapter of Colossians, mm -hmm. that Paul wrote about how the true believer, there in the 21st verse, was once alienated. Mm -hmm. And Paul says there that the true believer was once enemies of the Lord yeah, yeah. said that we were alienated and enemies of the Lord in our mind mm -hmm. because of our wicked works, mm -hmm. our wickedness, mm -hmm. our sin, mm -hmm. if you will. Now, if Paul says this of one who genuinely believed yesterday, believes still today, mm -hmm. imagine Imagine for a moment here today what this means for those that are of no faith today. If the genuine believer was once alienated and enemies of the Lord, imagine what that means today for one who does not believe. To the Romans, Paul wrote that the carnal mind is enmity against God. In other words, Paul was saying that the carnal mind is hostile against God because it is not subject to the law of God. Right. Now, let us remember that the law of God, it is unconditional love. Mm -hmm. The reason why it is unconditional love is because God himself, 
is love. And God's love, it is agape love. It is unconditional. As we have seen recently, God's love is one that does not rejoice in iniquity. In other words, it does not rejoice in injustice. It does not rejoice in wickedness. It does not tear one down. No, the Lord's love, it rejoices in truth. You see, God loves, it edifies, it uplifts us in our soul. Yet this law of God, a law that is of unconditional love, this law is rejected. This law, it is rejected in our world and by the world. So the world, it rejects a law that seeks to reach outwards. It rejects a law that seeks to reach outwards for a law that only looks inward. In other words, a law that is selfish in its nature. This selfish driven law has led to all manner of evil and wickedness against one own self and against all of those that are around them. Instead of a peace of mind, this selfish law, it creates confusion to which the Lord we know is not the author of God is not the author of confusion to make matters worse. We would believe that the selfish driven person Mm -hmm. will believe that they will be one that would actually love themselves. Mm -hmm. But, but often I begin to wonder whether the selfish person truly does love themselves. The reason why I wonder this is because those that tend to be overly selfish end up only hurting themselves. Mm -hmm. They not only hurt themselves, they not only hurt themselves, but they then hurt all of those that are around themselves as well because they don't have peace of mind. They don't truly love themselves. Mm -hmm. If we cannot love ourselves, how can we love those that are around us? If we cannot love ourself, how could we ever say that we have found peace of mind or have peace of mind? Not only can those of that mindset not love themselves or those that are around them, it is impossible. Hear me today. It is impossible for the overly selfish to love the Lord. Therefore, the idea of peace of mind, it is far from those who are not subject to the law of God. In order to find peace of mind, those that are not subject to the law of God must first find their way to his way. They must make peace with the Lord. You see, I want you to hear today that God has already made peace with us. God has left his door open and he has made it possible. God has made it possible for all people to reconcile themselves to him. Peace of mind. Do you want it today? Do you want peace of mind? If you want peace of mind, listen to what the Lord did for you to be able to have peace of mind today on this Palm Sunday Mm -hmm. to the Colossians. When Paul spoke of peace, he desired to make it clear that peace came from God and that it came from God first. Mm -hmm. He wanted to make it clear that God is the only one who has the power Mm -hmm. to establish true peace of mind. Mm -hmm. We see that Paul did this by first reminding the Colossians of the Lord's mighty power there in the 16th and the 17th verse where Paul wrote for by him, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. Paul said all things were created through him and for him. 
He said, and he is before all things and in him, all things consist. Mm -hmm. You see, we should understand there that Paul was establishing that God is the alpha and the omega, mm -hmm. the beginning and the end. Paul was letting the people know that the Lord is the first and the last. Yeah, yeah. Again, Paul was telling the people that God is omnipotent. Mm -hmm. God is omniscient. Yeah. God is omnipresent. Mm -hmm. All things are possible through him, even peace. Yeah. Where man has failed when it comes to peace, God has not failed. Mm -hmm. Some may think that the Lord has failed today, but I'm going to show you that God has not failed. If anyone is capable of establishing peace in the hearts of man, it is the Lord. Amen. It will be the one that created all things that are known and things that are unknown mm -hmm. as well. It will be God. Yeah. Yeah. In order to bring peace to the hearts of man, we will see that reconciliation is and was required. Mm -hmm. To reconcile, that means to restore, yeah. specifically to restore to friendship or to harmony. Mm -hmm. Paul, he stated to the Colossians that reconciliation, it first began with the Lord. Mm -hmm. right. It first began with God. The Lord first needed to reconcile all things to himself. Right. In the 20th verse, we'll see Paul said that the Lord needed to reconcile all things to himself. Whether things on earth or things in heaven, God needed to reconcile. He needed to restore to, to harmony all things to himself. Now, now, now this is a very interesting point that Paul has made here today. This is a very interesting point that Paul has made to the Colossians. And somebody may wonder why is this so interesting? Well, well, Paul's statement it speaks to the fact that there was discord between God and his creation. All right. yeah. In other words, there was no peace mm -hmm. between the Lord and his creation. God was not living in harmony All right. with his creation. Come on. Come on. So why was the Lord not living in harmony mm -hmm. with his own creation? Mm -hmm. The answer is sin. That's right. Sin is the answer. Yeah. Yeah. Sin, it threw everything into discord, into disarray. Mm -hmm. God was not living in harmony with his creation because sin, turmoil, mm -hmm. corruption, mm -hmm. it was present mm -hmm. in his creation. Mm -hmm. It was present not by his doing. God did not put sin into the world. Come on, come on. When God created this creation, he looked at it and he saw that everything was good. That is what he said there. In the book of Genesis, you will see it. You see, God is holy and righteous. In his righteousness, the Lord does not and will not dwell in the presence of of sin. Right. Yeah. Again, this point has been made clear and shown to us repeatedly throughout scripture. Mm -hmm. When Adam and Eve dwelt in the garden, the Lord would visit with them. But after they sinned, mm -hmm. after they sinned in the garden, the Lord, he immediately sent them out. Yeah. He sent them on their way. And God does not and will not dwell in the presence of sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It causes discord. Mm -hmm. This pollution and this corruption of sin, it continued to spread throughout the world. Mm -hmm. And with this pollution, the Lord, he separated himself from his creation. Mm -hmm. yeah. He separated himself from his creation rather than dwell with it. Mm -hmm. So in order for the Lord to dwell with mankind, his creation in harmony, reconciliation would need to be made between God and mankind. Mm -hmm. Now, if you notice here within this same verse here, 
If you notice here within this statement, Paul mentioned that reconciliation not only needed to be made between the Lord and the things on earth. He also says that that reconciliation needed to be made between the Lord and the things in heaven. Again, this statement is very interesting. What does this mean to us here? Well, before there was Adam and Eve, there was Satan. There was the devil and the angels that chose to follow him. That was up in heaven. When Satan and those angels rebelled against the Lord, essentially when they sinned against God, we are told in scripture that they were cast out of heaven, mm -hmm. that they were thrown out of heaven. Again, God does not and will not dwell in the presence of sin and he will not allow it to be in his presence. Mm -hmm. Because of Satan's wickedness in heaven, reconciliation was also needed for the things in heaven. In fact, we know that a new heaven will actually spring forth for those that the Lord has reconciled to himself. Right. Remember that Jesus said to the disciples that he was going away to prepare a place for them, for us, the believer. In the book of Revelation, we even see that a new heaven and a new earth will come forth mm -hmm. and that the first heaven and that the first earth that yeah. became sinful will pass away. Right. Reconciliation. Yeah. God had to restore all things to himself in order for there to be harmony with him. In order for this reconciliation to be the Lord temporarily put himself into his creation mm -hmm. through his only begotten son. Yeah, yeah. And the 19th verse there, we'll see that Paul wrote, for it pleased the father mm -hmm. that in him all the fullness should dwell. Mm -hmm. The him that Paul spoke of there to the Colossians was Christ. Yeah, yeah. the Lord's only begotten son. Mm -hmm. in Jesus, we should understand, was not half of God. In Jesus, we should understand, today was all of God. Yeah, yeah. God in the flesh. Right. The reason God gave himself to the world was for the atonement of the wickedness that had corrupted and polluted his creation mm -hmm. by giving himself as the propitiation for wickedness. The Lord could easily reconcile all things to himself and bring about harmony between him and his creation. All right. All right. Yeah. Again, we must understand that without giving himself to the world, mm -hmm. his creation would have remained tarnished by sin corrupted and polluted by sin without reconciliation. The Lord would have remained disgusted right. with his creation and that barrier of separation. It will still remain today without such separation. There would have never been any harmony with this separation still in place. There would be no peace between God and mankind. Yeah, yeah. So a child was born. Mm, mm. A son was given. Right. We know the rest, don't we? Yeah, yeah. His name was and is called Wonderful, mm -hmm. Counselor, Mighty God, yeah. Everlasting Father, yes, yes. Prince of what? Peace. Prince of what? Peace. Prince of peace. Mm -hmm. Through the only yeah. begotten son of God, mm -hmm. peace mm -hmm. was restored. Mm -hmm. As Paul said, through the blood of the cross. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You see, God was not going to join mankind in harmony by being a sinner like us. <laughs> Do you hear me here today? Right. God was not going to join us in harmony 
by being a sinner just like how we are. You see, God, he had to go about establishing peace in the most unlikely manner by giving his only begotten son. Instead of joining mankind in its sin, the Lord came to the world and shed a bright light on all of our sins. Instead of being aggressively hostile towards mankind by condemning us of all of our wrongdoing, we will see that God allowed man to condemn him like he was a sinner. The road to Jerusalem it ended with Jesus hanging on a cross, taking on all of the sins of mankind, taking on my sins, taking on your sins, becoming our scapegoat and shedding his blood for us. I don't know if you hear me here today. Doing all of this mm -hmm. to bring about harmony, mm -hmm. to restore peace mm -hmm. between us and the Lord. Oh, yes. 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 To the Corinthians, mm -hmm. Paul put it this way when it came to the work of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. In 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter in the 18th and the 19th verse, mm -hmm. We see that Paul said, now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation through the shed blood of Christ, oh, yeah. peace was restored to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Hear me mm -hmm. through his only begotten son's shed blood, harmony, mm -hmm. peace was restored to the Lord first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What this means is that the Lord was now at peace with what his creation Specifically, those of this creation that would turn to him. He was at peace with them, mm -hmm. with us today who genuinely believe in him. Now, let's not think for one second that God is at peace with the fully convicted sinner. Mm -hmm. Let's not think for one second that God is OK with the sins of the fully convicted sinner. Mm -hmm. God is still not pleased with sin. However, those who turn to him will be justified. They will be justified in his eyes for all of those wicked works that they have done, that we have done. You are justified in the Lord's eyes because of his only begotten son. You see, through the work of reconciliation, there is an opportunity today for all people to be justified in God's eyes. Mm -hmm. As Paul said to the Romans, we are justified by our faith. And through this justification, we have peace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have peace with the Lord. Mm -hmm. So peace of mind, I want you to understand today was not established by anything that you did. All right. All right. Peace of mind, I want you to understand today, was not established by anything that mankind did. Mm -hmm. Peace of mind, I want you to understand today, was established by what the Lord did for us mm -hmm. when he put himself into this world of sin yeah. and died for us when he gave his life for us. See, just take a look around us. There is absolutely nothing that we can do. There is absolutely nothing that man could ever do to establish peace. We are incapable of doing so. The one that was and is capable of doing so is the Lord. In order for us to find peace of mind, we must have peace with God first. We must have peace with God and from God we see today. Thankfully, we have peace from the Lord today. 
Thankfully, God gave his only begotten son to the world in order to perform the work of re reconciliation yeah. so that he could be in harmony with all of us, mm -hmm. with you and me. The work of reconciliation, it tore down that wall of discord. It tore down that wall of separation that the Lord had raised mm -hmm. due to sin. And now the doors of the Lord are open mm -hmm. to all of us today, mm -hmm. to all of mankind today. Mm -hmm. Because of the work of reconciliation, I want you to understand that forgiveness I want you to understand that redemption. I want you to understand that salvation has been made possible and is now on the table for all of mankind. Mm -hmm. Do you want peace of mind today? If you want it, you will come sit at that table. The work of reconciliation led to the giving of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit to come and to dwell in the hearts of all of those that genuinely believe in Christ. A point that we should not ever take lightly. The giving of the Holy Spirit. Through the inner dwelling of the Holy Spirit, our soul, something happens to our soul today. We're talking about peace of mind, right? Our soul, it, it begins to transform. Our soul, it begins to transform into a, a new thing, mm -hmm. into a new creation, mm -hmm. a creation that is led by the spirit in the manner of God's love, in the manner of God's peace. Mm -hmm. Do you want peace of mind today? Mm -hmm. As Jesus said to the sinful woman, he says to all of us who turn to the Lord, who come to God today, he says to us today, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. You see, Jesus can say this to us because he has established peace. He has established peace between us and the Lord. He can say this to us because peace of mind is a real thing. All you have to do is actually go to Jesus and there in Jesus, you can find peace. Peace. It is real today. The Lord, he looks at us today and he says something to us today that I want everyone to hear in this room and beyond this room. The Lord looks at us today and he says, I am reconciled to you. But will you now reconcile yourself to me? The Lord is literally asking everyone this question today. I have reconciled myself to you. I have come to you. I have made peace with you. But will you now come to me? And will you reconcile yourself to me? You see, God did not wait for man to come to him. See, we would have took forever to come to God. God did not wait. He knows us. He came to us first. And he came to us first with his arms stretched out wide to welcome us in, in peace. God, he desires to take away that guilt. Takes, he, he desires to take away that guilt of sin, which leaves in its wake those heartaches. That, that pain, those burdens, the stress. He desires to take away all those things that causes turmoil in our heart, mm -hmm. turmoil in our spirit that causes, in other words, discord that causes us not to be in harmony in our spirit. The Lord desires to take those things away from you today. Mm -hmm. But again, do you want him to do it? Do you want that peace of mind? Again, Jesus said to us to go to him if we are heavy laden and that he will give us rest. Mm -hmm. This rest, I tell you today, is peace. Mm -hmm. Jesus said that he will give us that safety and that security in his love. Yeah. Jesus said to us today that he will give us 
peace of mind today. The Lord desires to snatch that guilt out of your heart today. The Lord desires to give you that peace of mind. In order for us to have peace of mind, I believe that the best decision that you and I could ever make would be to live in harmony with God. In other words, we should live by the law of God rather than be of a carnal mind and live in enmity, live hostile against the Lord. Enmity with the Lord leads to a heart that is troubled and it only leads to a heart that is troubled because the Lord is not there to take away. You don't believe that God is there to take away those things that will burden you, that will cause discord and turmoil in your soul. Yet many will still say that they have found peace of mind today, even though they have not turned to the Lord. Even though that they are walking around with a troubled heart today, there are many who will foolishly say that they have found peace of mind because of something that they believe they have found in the world. Do you believe that you can find peace or have peace of mind is what I would ask you today. True peace of mind begins with reconciling your differences with God, turning from wickedness, repenting and seeking the Lord's forgiveness, seeking God's mercy. Many people know that they should repent today. Many people know that they, that they need the Lord's forgiveness. Many people know that they need the Lord's mercy, but unfortunately the turn from wickedness, it is very slow. It is extremely slow. And if it is not extremely slow, it ain't happening at all. Some aren't making the turn away from wickedness today, but they want peace of mind. Some today aren't turning to the Lord today, but they're begging and crying and pleading for peace, to have peace of mind. If you are begging and you are crying and you are pleading for peace of mind today, stop being stubborn and turn to the one who can give you peace of mind. The one who can bring peace to your soul today. Many people search all their lives trying to find peace of mind, but do so in the wrong manner. They do so in worldly things. They do so in relationships and jobs and even when it comes to wealth, only to find that their heart is not happy, only to find that they have not found any peace at all. And some sadly go to the grave, not ever having peace of mind. I don't want that today for anyone. I want us all to be able to rejoice in the peace of mind that God has for us. Because of their refusal to accept the Lord's peace, many people in our world today, they are hurting in their hearts. They're hurting and they're refusing to even acknowledge that they are hurting in their soul today. Because they do not have their own inner peace, they have no peace to share with those that are around them. They don't know it. Reconciliation, we must understand, was towards us because the Lord desires to be in harmony with all of us. Mm -hmm. The Lord desires to be in harmony with you. He desires for us to be in harmony with us, or he desires to be in harmony with us and for us to be in harmony with him. Redemption, that is towards the Lord. That is us turning to God. So the question still must be answered today. Do you believe? Do you believe that the Lord gave his only begotten son to reconcile all things to himself so that you and I can have peace so that we could be at peace with him and so that he can be at peace with us? Do you believe that in this peace that you can find forgiveness, mercy, and salvation from the Lord. 
Do you believe that you can not only have peace in the world today, but that you can have everlasting peace with the Lord? These are questions that we must answer, and we must answer these questions for ourselves. You must answer this question for yourself because you will be held accountable for the choice that you choose to make when it comes to answering these questions. Do you believe that the Lord has reconciled himself to you? Amen. Amen. Amen.